couple big changes as we head through the rest of the week. One of those, better air quality, another, cooler temperatures. I'm walking you through a forecast you might just love. I'm at the incident command post for the Corkscrew fire. We'll be getting an update from firefighters about what happened with the fire overnight. Ultimately, it's going to be up to the Taliban to show the rest of the world who they are and how they intend to proceed. The Taliban is taking steps to form a new government as the U.S. works to evacuate thousands of Americans and civilians. Since the news broke of the Taliban takeover, many photos and videos have been shared online, allegedly taken from the current situation in Afghanistan. We verify what's true and false. Up with Crim begins now with Tim Pham, Channing Curtis, and Jeremy Legu. This morning, we continue to track a devastating wildfire in Stevens County. The corkscrew fire has destroyed at least 20 buildings, including 12 homes, while multiple agencies working to contain the fire as evacuations remain in place. Right now, we do have Nicole Hernandez at the Fire Command Center at Lakeside Middle School. Nicole, tell us uh, what you're seeing where you're at just moments ago in that live look. We saw some flames. What are you seeing right now? Yeah, so here from the command post, the fire is still a little ways away and we can't really see any smoke or any from anywhere from this point here. But I did just get an update from Isabel Hoygarden. She was able to tell me that overnight, some of that weather that came through really calmed down the fire. She said they got some rain on the north end of the fire and they were able to build some dozer lines on the south end of the fire. That's really helping them start to get control of what's going on here. She did say, though, that we should expect to see smoke on and off as the inside of this huge fire obviously continues to burn while they try to get control of the uh, outer uh, you know forward progression of this fire so for now here's what you need to know about the evacuations those are still in place at this point you can see here on your screen the red area west of Ford and north of Tum Tum is under level three evacuation that means to get out now if you live in that area level two evacuations are in place for the area south of Clayton Southeast of Springdale is under level one evacuations. You can find an evacuation map on creme.com. Now crews say that the winds can change the direction of the fire at any time, prompting new evacuations. Um, so far right now, the evacuate, evacuation levels that we have, um, I think are, are appropriate, but this fire is dynamic. It does move a lot. So if we do need uh, additional evacuations, we're trying to get that out early and be able to tell the communities that those areas are starting to become threatened as soon as we know that um, that fire is progressing towards that area. I'm just talking to Isabel right now. She said that the fire is still sitting right about at 14,000 acres and still is 0% contained. She said it is still actively burning. You, sh you should expect to see some of that smoke and stuff in the air for quite some time. There are shelters for anyone who has had to evacuate at Wellpinit Middle and High School. There's also a Red Cross shelter at Mary Walker High School. Live in Stevens County, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Well, FEMA has approved Washington State's request for federal funds to help fight that corkscrew fire. The fire could potentially cause destruction, causing a major disaster. So this authorization makes FEMA funding available to pay 75% of the state's firefighting costs. Now we're following dozens of fires around eastern Washington and North Idaho this morning. So for the very latest, you can text the word FIRE to 509-448-2000. We'll send any updates directly to your phone. All right, 602. Now let's get outside to meteorologist Jeremy Legu. Last night when I went to bed, it was quite smoky, but Jeremy told us that smoke would clear out and we are so thankful. Good morning, Jeremy. Well, good morning, Channing and Tim, and it's a, it's a beautiful morning. There's no doubt about that, but it's one of those ones where I'm saying enjoy it while you can. With how volatile some of those fires have been and with some of them creating their own weather pattern and with all the heat and all the smoke, you got to take advantage of good air quality when it's here and it is here. You can see pretty far early on this morning and our AQI currently sits at 27, which means it is good. Will likely be good to moderate throughout the day today. Some of that smoke from up in Stevens County will start to move a little bit closer. A lot of that stays just out to the west of Spokane, but it is likely we do start to see a little bit of it. But for now, it is good air quality. Temperatures in the mid 50s as well. It is a perfect August morning. Wow, it really doesn't get much better than this. A beautiful start to the day. Wind is going to stay out of the north, so that does pull some of that smoke down. But notice it is much calmer than it has been. 
When you're talking high temperatures and a lot of wind, that's exactly what you don't want to see when it comes to wildfires. It helps them grow, it helps them spread, it helps them put more smoke up into the air. So for now, breathe it in. Wow, that smells really good. I was just doing that for dramatic effect, but no, really, maybe go outside and do that. It smells wonderful out here this morning and we'll start to clear things out throughout the day. A couple of stray clouds is about it. Most of our shower activity stays down in the southern portions of the Idaho Panhandle. For us, it's this. Temperatures climbing into the mid 70s later on this afternoon and Tim mentioned the night market on Wednesday there and uh, oh, I can't even think of the part of town. All right, anyway, night market. It's going to be perfect weather for it. And uh, they got in my ear and thank you very much. Kendall Yards is where the night market is tonight and it's looking like a perfect day for that. Looking forward to that. Well, time for your morning rush now. More news in less time. One of the victims of the Browns Edition fire has been identified. Early Monday morning, the fire took the life of Sherry Vick, who lived on the top floor of Tiffany Manor. The medical examiner confirmed she died from smoke inhalation. She leaves behind two sons and two granddaughters. The thing that she really spent the most time doing was hanging out with my daughters, being grandma with them. Now, while the family is still waiting to learn exactly what happened, they say they're grateful for donations from the community to help give Sherry a proper memorial. The State Department of Health says it's receiving reports of fake vaccine exemption forms. The agency says one version uses a vaccine form from the DOH website and adds COVID-19, but that's not valid. The agency says adults who didn't don't need to get a DOH exemption form. It says if your employer or university requires a COVID vaccination, you should contact them to find out how they collect vaccination proof. It's been three weeks since five-year-old Michael Vaughn was last seen outside his home in Fruitland, Idaho. Local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies have looked into 290 tips that have been sent in by citizens. In a Facebook post, Fruitland Police say they have not eliminated any possibility and that they will continue to follow every lead in their search for Michael. The Washington State Department of Health was updated their COVID-19 uh, guidelines for K-12 sports. Student athletes will not be required to wear masks while competing this year. Unvaccinated students will still need to undergo COVID-19 screenings though, and masks will be required among all student and staff while not, while not competing. That's your morning news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCrem on social media. Days after the Taliban took over in Afghanistan, there are growing fears at the White House about the group not keeping their promises. And we're going to take you outside and talk weather because we've got some good air quality early on this morning. A little bit of cloud cover, but that cloud cover is expected to move out later on today. And it's looking to be a perfect Wednesday.